apparently a new Lord of the Rings movie in the works. It's going uh, to be The Hunt for Gollum. Uh, <laughs> and the, uh, the, the rip roaring really? success was The Lord of Rings Gollum. They've decided to capitalize yeah. into a film. <laughs> Direct adaptation. They're not going to change a thing. So it, it's New Line that's working on this, isn't it? Um, and it's Z David Zaslow, sorry, David Zaslow that announced it. Um, and he was yeah. saying that, uh, well, it's going to have Andy Serkis returning to the role of Gollum, which is going to be a bit of a challenge because he's about 60 years old now. So good luck doing the mocap for that. Um, but yeah, he said, uh, for over two decades, moviegoers have embraced the Lord of the Rings film trilogy because of the undeniable devotion of Peter, Fran, and uh, Philippa, they have shown towards protecting the legacy of Tolkien's works. You know, like directly adapting the books that he wrote instead of going off on a tangent and doing a, a weird mid-quill story that's not actually covered in the books, but never mind. Um, and to ensure audience could experience the incredible word he created in a way that honours his literary vision. Uh, we are honoured that they've agreed to be our partners on these new films. So there's going to be two new ones, with Andy coming aboard to direct Lord of the Rings, The Hunt for Gollum, we continue an important commitment to excellence that is a true hallmark of how we want to venture ahead and contribute to Lord of the Rings cinematic history. That sounds lovely. The problem is they don't really have any source material to draw from on this one because I just recently reread Lord of the Rings and I can tell you that the hunt for Gollum is covered in about two paragraphs of Aragorn bitching to everyone about how much he stank once he <laughs> captured him. It's, it's, it's not a, a really involved episode of the books. So it's I like the idea you read that and you're like, oh, movie potential, yes. <laughs> I have all because yeah, there's a there's a ton of things that happen in the books that you could expand upon. There's like lots of fascinating stories there that um you could tell. This is not one of them, I don't think. I mean, I could be I could be crazy on this one, call me crazy, but that just seems like an odd choice. I wonder if they're gonna be using the notes. The notes. That's the only thing I could think of because they've supposedly slated at least six films. They want to do the Strider Adventures, also. <laughs> Good God! I thought you meant six films with Gollum. No, <laughs> well, after, after it's like Hobbit. a really long hunt, Muller. <laughs> well, after the Hobbit, you know, he turned one book into three movies, so you could at least get two out of two. Films for Gollum. Yeah, yeah. Be horrible. I feel like I the mean, Hobbit is a really good example as to why this film shouldn't come out. If you yeah. don't have enough source material to fulfill an actual film, and so you just have to go and make up a load of stuff, and then you jam it all together, and then you divide it into three films, so you have to keep coming up with even more stuff that you're not drawing upon. We've seen how that goes. It doesn't go very well. Um, that Peter I mean, Jackson was very good adapting The Lord of the Rings, but creating The Hobbit story was probably a mistake. Do you think they'll platoon that? Was that his fault, or was that Del uh, Guillermo del Toro who was originally the one? He was directing it, and then they brought uh, Jackson at the last moment. I don't know. I honestly couldn't say. I think it's just misconceived from the off. You can't make three films out of The Hobbit. There's not enough material there. One film would do. Um, and it, it's just it's just a good example of, of people who are very, very good at adapting the works of other people who are not very good at creating something for themselves. Uh, so I'm think, not, not optimistic for The Search for Gollum, or whatever it's called. I think in terms Gollum, of The yeah, Hobbit... But... Probably if, uh, yeah, if Peter Jackson had been involved right from the beginning, we would have had a much better trilogy. I still agree with your general point, though, that it wouldn't have been nearly as good as The Lord of the Rings because the source material just wasn't there. You had to start filling in a lot of gaps by yourself, um, and that's where that's where a lot of Hollywood screenwriters come unstuck, and I suspect you would have had the same problem here, no matter who was helming the project from the very beginning. But yeah, this just seems like an even worse problem. Well, at least it'll be better than The Rings of Power. <laughs> sure, <laughs> I know. I know it's, that's know. not saying much, but I that's thought a low bar. You, yeah, I know. But I thought when you were mentioning today something breaking news, it's kind of like fits perfectly with that Apple commercial that came out. Oh. You saw that one? Oh, that wow, yeah, destroying you know all of the all things these, that these we beautiful pieces of like culture and creative endeavor. You know, like machinery that's like powered human culture for for generations and then this just black or so gray monolith just crushes it all and i thought that's a perfect encapsulation of everything that apple is but i uh i hearing that this film exists i can like <laughs> see the image in my mind of a studio executive up on a stage at comic-con with like a big display of a timeline of all of like the lord of the rings franchise movies that they want to do that's <laughs> what i can see when i hear this yeah about it gets me really cynical. Oh, like, yeah. I think the real 
disappointing thing of all of this is where are our new franchises? Yeah. You know, uh, we've got, I mean, well, we've got Rebel Moon, Rob. What more do you well, want? Well, I mean, look, I would say that one of the things that has come out recently uh, that was successful that people like is John Wick. And John Wick did not cost a lot of money. They didn't know at first, they didn't know that it would have any beyond the first film, that it would ever have any resonance. And we're now, we've had four John Wick films. And of course, they might not have the timeless quality of the Lord of the Rings movies, but they were something new for our age. And it's, I, I find it so disconcerting that uh, the Lord of the Rings books were hermetically sealed. You've got your three books. And then, of course, you have the Silmarillion and, and all the appendices and all the other lost tales and all that. But those are not really narratives, so to speak. And so the Lord of the Rings was done. You know, it's 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 a finished, essentially finished franchise. And now, I, I hate to say it because I've talked about this a lot, it's, it's more fraudulent creation where you're trying to take something that has name value because the analytics like it, Wall Street likes it, whoever, whoever likes it, but there's no real... And look, they can... I understand Peter and Fran and Philippa and, and Andy Serkis will do the best job they can to make the best thing that they can make. But ultimately, it's a losing proposition because... It's something that isn't really a part of the original author's intent for his story. And there's so many other projects out there, whether you like the three body problem or not, that was a new franchise or a new, uh, that's an adaptation of a, of a trilogy of books. And it's something new and unique. And there's something to be said for these kinds of stories. Every, every era has, has stories that are unique to that era. And whether the Lord of the Rings, you know, was written in the 50s, 60s, and then it gets adapted into a film in the early aughts, that's, it was when it was written, and then when it came out. Where's the stories of today that are going to define today's generation that they're going to carry with them for the next 30 or 40 years? And I, I feel that um, our whole entertainment complex is moribund by this idea of chasing, I mean, we just got Ripley, uh, a, a new version of the talented Mr. Ripley that was done by Scott Frank, who did the great godless and adapted the queen's gambit, which were things we'd never seen before. And then he went back and adapted something we already had. And it seems to me, what a, what a waste of such talent. But where are the Tolkien's of the day? I mean, you have to adapt it from some, because I think Hollywood can't create anymore. Well, well, I mean, George, there's other... George R. R. Martin had his shot. <laughs> yeah. Stopped writing books about 15 years. So, yeah. The interesting thing is that it almost seems like there's a lack of recognition on the part of studios that the franchises of today started as just one original story at some point in time. Mm. Like it wasn't, it wasn't you know preordained that things like Terminator or Alien were going to become franchises. That was well, not, yeah, you know, and that like, wasn't a necessarily even an expectation. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. Hey, at least we got like one good sequel for each of them out of it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but, it's um, well, yeah, you like, know, you look how many of them were. They all ultimately got franchised into the ground, like yep. Terminator, Alien, Predator. Like they've all they've all gone. Um, and same thing with Star Wars. I guess they tried to apply the Marvel model to it, and look where that ended up. Yeah, now they're at a place where um, how how much how valuable are they as franchises that they have at this point? I mean, if you make another Terminator film, is that going to make any money? I mean, at this point, I think it's safe to say that Disney is very concerned about whether or not a new Star Wars film would make any money. So I mean, you can't. It, yeah, absolutely, they should be. And same with the same with Marvel as well. And it's it. That's not a good place to get yourself in either. Of just oh well, now you have nothing new that's like coming out to a you know in a much more cynical sense replenish the stock of franchises. But you know there should like with, without that now what are you going to rely on to uh, allow well, you to keep existing? Yeah, I mean, like culturally, our culture is now running on fumes because we've exhausted our, our fuel supply um, at this point. And yeah, it's they brought it on themselves ultimately. I do wonder <clears throat> if part of this decision to make more Lord of the Rings movies was at least partially motivated by Rings of Power and the failure of it. <laughs> because they can essentially bring these out. It's like, ah, look, the adults are back in the room. We're the guys that made the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. Remember us? We did and, a good job. You can like right. what we do. How you know, long will that last, though? That's the thing. I know. You, know, well, have six, you can only play that card once. Right, yeah. but they got six films planned. They're going to see how War of the Rohirrim does this year, because it's coming yeah. out. Yeah. That's the animated one, isn't it? 
I think yeah, there's, isn't the there still something part. in the contract which basically says that you are obliged to make use of the IP that you have within a set time frame. Otherwise, that you lose the rights to it. I think I remember reading it a long time ago. Most, that was one of the reasons that the War of the Rohirrim, for example, was coming out. Yeah, right. I mean, most most movie studios when they purchase rights and they make a rights agreement, like they they don't hold the rights for all eternity because then that would just lock them up forever and that would be a shit deal for the the original owner. So yeah, they're time limited usually. Uh, and hence, yeah, every 10 years or so, you can just make a, a crap film if you want to retain those rights because you're putting out something and that's enough to start the clock again. It's it's a crap way of doing things, but it does work in some cases. Well, at least for Rohirrim, they got uh, Brian Cox. They got Brian Cox. They got a pretty good cast for it. So, I mean, it looks like it could be good. I haven't seen the script or anything. Well, one of the yeah. things I find strange is that when, when I was in elementary school and junior high and first reading Tolkien, I also, at the same time, there were other fantasy series concurrently that people read just as much, like Stephen R. Donaldson's The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, The Unbeliever, like mm-hmm. Lord Fowl's Bane and White Gold Wielder and all the, those six books were amazing. Uh, Piers Anthony's Incarnations of Immortality series on a pale horse. Um, these are things that we were all reading. And I've never understood like, okay, in the wake of Lord of the Rings, there's all of these other, and I think they're relatively unknown or people, they're, they're sort of locked in development hell, but there's all of these other kinds or other great literary based franchises that no one's even delved into before. And I, I've always wondered, well, why? Why we got the Shannon TV series, but other than that, not much. Yeah, I agree, Rob. I think there are great works of literature. We, Michael Moorcock, could you imagine a oh. golden age of Hollywood doing like Elric of Melnibone? Uh, I mean, that would you would uh, Michael Moorcock is a perfect example, you know. And uh, they they did adapt one of his works as a movie called The Final Program, um, <laughs> aka The Last Days of Man on Earth. That's pretty pretty the jerry cornelius story but i'm surprised at how little they've delved into mid-century fantasy because there was such great stuff that was coming out wake of tolkien's work um and i think as i hate to say this but terry brooks's sort of shanner was too much of a of a repeat of lord of the rings whereas the thomas covenant books are amazing they couldn't and be filmed though the covenant couldn't be filmed after so around the time the Lord of the Rings films were coming out, massively successful. So you had then attempts to adapt Aragon, which failed. Narnia came back to the screen, which oh, yeah. failed. They're doing it um, again. I think there were a couple of other attempts, but like you can tell the difference there is just that it's the Star Wars effect. Star Wars comes out, it's really successful, and then all of a sudden there's a glut of films with the word star in the title. Sort of similar with Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Lots of bad fantasy adaptations come out because the motive there isn't to do with the adaptation. The motive is to cash in on the genre buzz at, yes. at the time. But then now we, we've got to the point where, you know, Amazon does Wheel of Time before Rings of Power seemingly as a test case for like, how badly can we fuck up a really much loved mm-hmm. fantasy genre of, you know, many, many books? How badly could we change it and make everybody really annoyed? So they did that as a trial run. It was incredibly unsuccessful. And so they thought, right, time's, it's Rings of Power time now. This will be even better than that. So even <laughs> if we did look back and start saying, well, let's pick out your favorite long running fantasy author of like the middle of the last century, you'd probably still get terrible adaptations just because... That's the real problem. It's, well, there's two problems. One of them is that we are we are not producing the new things to adapt. The other problem is that we have no ability to actually adapt the things that we have, which is not an easy thing to solve. So the problem with this Gollum film is that there's like Crew Drinker said in, in the panel said that there's nothing to adapt. Gollum story is done. Uh, Lord of the Rings is done. Like Rings of Power is punishment enough <laughs> for us de- for us dedicated fans out there. Yeah. <laughs> For us dedicated fans out there that actually understand Tolkien, there was there's nothing to take from with the Rings of Power, which is why the show is so bad. There's nothing to adapt with this hunt for God because literally a couple paragraphs, it's like making a show about Tom Bombadil, who Frodo and Sam encounter once on their journey to uh, the Prancing Pony. 
It's literally a passing glance in the book. In the movie, they don't even have them in there. It just don't matter. It's not important. I mean, Andy Serkis is a great actor. He's getting up there in age. Ain't no way he's going to have the same voice he did when he first made him run the rings. There's no way. But the time has passed. Lord of the Rings is done. The story's done. You want to tell something new past the movies? Okay. You want to adapt the Middle Earth games in television with my boy Italian and Killer Grimboard? Yeah, do that. Make a story, make a short film about one of the dwarves or something in Moria. I mean, that Gollum game was terrible. It was sounded like it like that. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, the Rings of Power is terrible. And they don't even have another trailer for the next season or whatever. I was like, the fact that they can't even get another trailer out. This might be a response to that, but Amazon is cracking down on Rings of Power, unfortunately. So that's a whole other set of problems. But, uh, yeah. The Hunt for Gollum, I'm like, really? I heard this news yesterday. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. They are going to look for Gollum. Gandalf looked for Gollum. You know what happened? He got captured. He brought the freaking Barador. And that's where he was for like weeks on end. There is no story there. The rest of the time he's looking for the freaking ring and he's following the fellowship through Moria and he can't go to uh, Lothlorien. But uh, there is no story. Story's been told. Give me a break, man.